Civil engineering is characterized by tasks and challenges that require efficiency, accuracy and, above all, the right formula at the right time. My name is Praxiteles and these are the most important formulas of a civil engineer. A little note in advance, in this video we consider the formulas that are most relevant for the daily work of a civil engineer and a student. Thus, it is a subjective selection of formulas that our team has made. If you miss some formulas, feel free to write them in the comments. Let's start with structural formulas because they are essential for the civil engineering studies. Here we have the well-known moment or bending moment, usually indicated by the letter M. The moment is the effect of a force acting on a point. It results from the shortest vertical distance to this point and the action line of the force. The formula for this is m equals distance times force. For example, consider a simple cantilever. Here, the bending moment to be absorbed at support A is calculated if we simply multiply the acting force by the shortest distance to the support. This distance is also called lever arm. If we have a line load on the beam instead of the single load, we have to calculate the resulting single load from it. This is easily done for a constant line load by multiplying it by the acting length. Thus, for a classic single span beam, the maximum field moment is m equals ql to the square 8. This formula is also used very often in practice, since most structural systems can be easily converted into single span beams. Let's summarize briefly. The maximum bending moment of a single span beam under a constant distributed load is m equals ql to the square eighth in the span center and fl quarter for a single load. In the case of a cantilever, there is the maximum moment at the restraint and this is ql squared by 2 for a distributed load and for a single load at the cantilever end, f times l. We continue with the deformations. Deformations are deflections of a structure due to loads. Thus, a single span beam is deformed under a constant line load, so that the beam axis is displaced and the so-called bending line is created. Of course, there are also the corresponding formulas for the deformations. For our cantilever for example, it is W equals QL caret 4 by 8 times E, I, and for the single span beam W equals QL caret 4 by 76.8 times E, I. You do not need to know these formulas by heart, but they bring us to our next topic, to the cross sections. These are directly related to the deformations because the formulas contain two important parameters. These are the modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia. This is a geometric parameter of a cross-sectional area. It indicates the cross-section's resistance to deformation. Together with the modulus of elasticity, it forms the stiffness. The formula for the moment of inertia about the y-axis of a rectangle with a surface A equals B times H is I equals width times height caret 3 through 12 and I equals height times width caret 3 by 12 about the z-axis. Very important to note, the axis about which our cross-section rotates defines whether the width or the height squared is multiplied by 12 times the area. Another very important cross-section parameter is the section modulus. The essential goal for structural engineering is to measure the resistance of a beam to the development of internal stresses when loaded. The section modulus is equal to the moment of inertia due to the maximum perpendicular distance of the cross-section edge to the stress-free, neutral fiber. In our example with the rectangle, the maximum distance to the neutral fiber, i.e. to the center of the cross-section, is half the height. This results in z equals width times height squared by 6. When calculating a rectangular cross-section, you should remember the formulas for the moment of inertia in the section modulus. Now we come to the fourth and final formula, action combination. In order to ensure the stability design of buildings, it is necessary to consider the structural components in the ultimate limit state in the design. In simple terms, this means that our designs must cover the safety of the structure or the safety of persons. And to achieve this, all loads must be increased by certain safety factors. These are 1.35 for permanent loads and 1.5 for variable loads. 
These factors result from statistical distributions. Permanent loads include, for example, the self-weight of a floor, the floor structure, and the like. Since these loads do not spread very well, they are increased by 35%. In other words, the variable loads, for example, drywall, furniture, and the like, may deviate more from the mean value of the loading depending on the use and are therefore increased by 50%. And thus we come to our last formula. Action combination equals 1.35 times permanent loads plus 1.5 times variable loads. Always pay attention to the foot pointer, which tells us what it is. K stands for the real load and D for the design value. Finally, you can find a table overview. Here we have the bending moment and the deformations. And here is the moment of inertia, the section modulus and the action combination. This was our selection for the most important formulas of a civil engineer. We hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.